What's up guys, my name is Jack and I made a DIY river table. In this video I'm going to explain pretty much how I did it, the materials I used, some things I learned, the mistakes I made, and just my overall experience for using epoxy. I really like the whole process and I'm really happy with how it came out, so let's get into it. First things first, the materials I used. So you're going to need a deep pour epoxy. I used MAS deep pour resin. I found this at my local Rockler store and I used this because an experienced gentleman recommended it to me and on top of that MAS actually has YouTube videos and they explain like very thoroughly how to use it and what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Uh, you're also going to need a tabletop epoxy. This one's just like tougher so it, and it's easier to clean. I use the same brand MAS for the exact same reasons. Uh, you're going to need some sort of heat source. You need this to remove the bubbles from the pores. If you are using MAS, it is a slow cure, so the bubbles will come out naturally, but the heat gun does help. Sandpaper, you're gonna need a bunch of this for in between each of the pores. Um, I also do recommend you get some of the breathable sandpaper that just like lets the epoxy escape and it doesn't gum it up so much. You might need a little bit of that. Uh, you definitely need a bunch of spare rags just to wipe your hands, wipe the table, wipe everything off, or even plug holes because this stuff is definitely messy. You'll want to have some rags. Um, you definitely need safety materials. You need gloves and a mask because this stuff is like full of chemicals and you don't want to touch it or have it on your skin at all. So don't skip this. Um, you're going to need a five gallon bucket and a mixer. I got one for every pour. Um, you could probably reuse it, but you really don't want to put the chemicals from your last pour into your new pour because it could mess things up. So I just got like one bucket and one mixer for every pour I planned on doing, which for me was about like four or five. Uh, you're going to need a drill, obviously. Any hand drill is good just to put the mixer on. You don't really want to mix this stuff by hand because mixing it is like super important. So these two here aren't actually my table, but just to keep in mind, you can add things in between like, you know, this golf stuff or the Star Wars stuff. You could really add anything, pebbles, you know, just be creative and make it unique. You're also going to need like something for the basis of the table. So most people use wood, but again, be creative. I'm sure you could find whatever you want. And of course, you're going to need table legs. You know, you can get shorter legs or taller legs or, you know, whatever style style you want, but just get some legs that you're going to put on the table. All right. Now that's pretty much like the basic materials. So let's let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is find your wood. Um, the wood is important because this is kind of like the basis of your table. So make sure you got two pieces that you really like, because once you get started, you're not going to want to go back. What you're gonna do with the wood is sand it down. I took like a lot of time sanding it, probably like 10 hours just sanding these pieces of wood. Make them really smooth, get all the you know loose stuff off of it, get all the bark off of it. Make sure that this wood is gonna last because you don't want your table crumbling from the inside out. Um, the next thing I recommend doing is using like some Photoshop or drawing or just kind of give yourself a game plan. Try to get you know the colors that you want and all that. Try to figure it out because that's important to know before you start doing something like this. All right, now after it's all sanded down and you kind of have a plan, it's time to start using the epoxy. So the first thing that I did was use a tabletop coat. This helps preserve the wood for longer and you kind of want this as like a basis. It'll also help the other epoxy like grab to it better, I guess. So yeah, just, just pour this on, use it as like a practice run. This first pour isn't super important, but you can use it to, you know, get an idea for how this stuff handles. Okay. The next thing I did after that was I drilled some holes into the wood. And what I did was I drilled it like sort of, I guess on the banks of the river, you would call it. This just helps the epoxy like settle into the wood and really anchor your piece together. So it's like super tight. All right. Now that that's out of the way, you're going to need to build a mold for your table. I didn't really record a lot of this, but this is probably the most important pro part of the process. Um, you really need to make sure that it's tight, like no leaks go through because the epoxy is pretty much water like. So if there's even a little hole, you will lose like a bunch of epoxy and a, and a bunch of money and a bunch of time and all that. 
So really do the best that you can to make sure it's like level, tight, all sealed off. You really wanna use this red tape. It helps the epoxy pop off after. Yeah, you should really focus on this. Okay, but after that's done, that's probably the hardest part. It's time to do the fun parts. You got it in the mold, you're all set. It's time to mix your deep pour epoxy. So what you're gonna do is mix the part A and the part B like it tells you on the box. And then you're gonna wanna add some coloring. So I'm using this like Nokum Blue from Eye Candy, I'm pretty sure. And it's like a mica powder. And you just mix in a little bit and it goes like a really long way. So once you do that, just add a little bit at a time and keep mixing it and you'll get the color that you want and then just keep mixing. You really can't over mix it. So make sure that you like mix it really good. Otherwise it won't cure properly. And then the other thing I want to tell you is you probably don't want to mix like multiple gallons at the same time because it will heat up a bunch and like even melt your bucket and just mess things up. So probably just stick to like one package at a time, which for me was about 1.3 gallons. And I did that like once a day, pretty much. Um, also, if you're trying to figure out like how many gallons you're gonna need, the MAS website actually has a calculator. So you could just go in there, enter the length, the depth and the width, and they'll tell you how many gallons you'll need. You should probably just get like a little bit extra. It's always good to have a little bit more, but yeah, that's how you should do that. So once you mix it all up good, you have the color that you want, it's time to pour it in. So just pour it in and spread it out evenly. Try to fill in like the little holes in the wood, like the knots and things like that. And you pretty much want to pour it so it's about like half an inch thick. That's just really depending on like the temperature and all that. But if you're keeping it between like 60 and 70 degrees and it's like a fairly decent sized table, half an inch is good. So at this point, my mold did spring a leak, which I feel like is pretty much it's gonna happen so you're gonna need to like act quickly stick towels in there tape it up use caulking do whatever you can to keep as much epoxy inside and stop it from leaking out um then i kept checking on it like every 30 minutes but if i poured it at nine o'clock around 3 30 4 o'clock it was at the state where it was thick enough so i could stir a pattern into it so what you do is you just like take a little piece of wood or stir and you just stir in the pattern that you like. So I did kind of like swirls, like waves. And then at this point, it's like too dry to mess up the pattern. So it'll just freeze like that. So then you just want to wait, like after you stir it for the last time, don't touch it again. Just wait until the next day until it's all the way hard. You got to repeat these steps until you get all the way to the top of the wood but don't pour another pour until the one underneath it is all the way dry. And in between each pour, you wanna sand down a little bit just to make sure that each layer is grabbing the next. Um, so yeah, use your safety stuff and mix up another batch. And it's like really relaxing at this point. I was having fun and just kind of enjoying the time out there. So yeah, now it's ended up pouring all the way to the top and it looks pretty good. You got to take it out of the mold at this point and it is difficult because it's like really hard, but just take your time, go slow. You don't want to ruin it at this point. I use like wedges, pry bars, crowbars, hammers, and just like go across the edges slowly and slowly and slowly and just pop it out a little bit at a time. Eventually it will come out. So once you get it out, you'll be super, super happy. Like this was awesome. You finally get to see it and it looks amazing. Trust me. So now what you want to do is like, just take a look around it, see what type of things you want to clean up, what you want to do and like how you're going to handle it next. So the first thing you're going to want to do is probably you're going to want to router the edges. My edges came out like really sharp just because of the way that it dried. So what I did was I took a router and went across the edges and smoothed those out. And I think that this is just a nice finishing touch step, but you could also just sand it or you'll figure out a way to do that. 
Um, after that, you're gonna need to do one more tabletop, tabletop epoxy pour. The reason why you wanna do it is like I said, it's just harder and like easier to clean than the other stuff. So this is like, if you don't want it to scratch and all that, you should do one more with the tabletop epoxy. Um, you will probably need to, so what I did to do the tabletop epoxy is I just put it on a piece of wood in the middle of the table on the underneath. So it was kind of like free floating there. And then I just poured it all on top and let it dry overnight. In the morning, you'll probably need to sand the bubbles off the bottom, but that shouldn't take you long at all. And then you're pretty much done. So at that point, I took it up to my room and attached the legs just simply with a screw gun. And that was pretty much it. So before I finish the video, I want to say that I'm not a professional at all. This was my first time using epoxy. So I definitely made some mistakes and I could have done better. So I want to shout out to the Reddit epoxy, which I asked a lot of questions to and they helped me a lot. I really recommend you go on there if you have any questions. So before I show my final product, I'll show my mistakes so you guys can try to do better. So first you see I have these blemishes on the top. I think that these came from screwing the legs into the bottom and then just created like some pressure in the piece. So maybe if you have a better way than using screws, you could try that. The next thing is this bubbly swirl. I did this by like stirring it too late, like let's say probably at like six o'clock or something. So the epoxy was already too cured and the bubbles just ended up staying in there. The next thing is I have like these spider webs. I'm pretty sure this is from the butane from the heat gun that I used and it just kind of like settled in. And I think if you use the heat gun instead of a blowtorch, then you'd be better off. And the last thing is I have this blue line here, which easily could have been cleaned up while it was wet, but I guess I just didn't see it. Other than that, I'm super happy with the finished product. I love sitting here. I use it to eat, play video games, watch movies, homework, everything. I really like it. Thanks for sticking along. I hope I explained some things for you. Feel free to comment any questions and good luck if you try to build one.